evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, those of you that are cool, you please mute you, your microphones at this time. Uh, you can all stand, remove your hands, and grab your framework. Join me and say the Pledge of Allegiance. should have a summary of the changes uh, for the sake of, the sake of expediency. Um, we did convey our team as we're supposed to every year and um, take a look at the code of conduct. And we felt the need, um, if you look at the very first one, to update the opening part of the code of conduct to reflect um, remote and virtual learning events um, and, and add in both online and in person. With the recent changes in the way our instruction is going, we felt that was critical. Um, the next change, really, the next few changes are all about simplifying language or clarifying it. Some of these changes came up throughout the course of the year where there was some ambiguity or a question came up. So um, we wanted to make sure that, like, the second change was clarifying um, the dress code and parts of the body that should be covered. Similarly, in the third change, um, we decided we wanted to um, remove redundant language and combine disorderly and disruptive into one um, one entry in the code of conduct. Hey, Joe. Yes. Can I ask you this, Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, with the kids have a dress code virtually, it actually, you know, I've seen a number of articles on it already. How, how are we going to deal with that uh, spot? Because I had a positive to me, like, what are we going to do when the kid gets up? Because if I go, told to go change, and the parent's yelling at him, get back on the computer. Are you going to call the parent, or are you going to direct the kid to go change? So with, with the immediacy, um, the teacher, with a lot of the discipline that could happen online, mm -hmm. the teacher could remove the child from the class temporarily and address it. But because it's in the moment, it's hard to contact the parent at the same time, but the parent will be contacted. The communication with the parent, especially in the virtual or you know the hybrid type learning, is critical for that. So if a student isn't doesn't present himself or herself when they come into class, they're not allowed in. We have to see their face to make sure we know them. And if they're not dressed appropriately, um, the teacher could address it like, "I'm going to remove you from class until you." correct this and then remove them and the student can always come back in so i, I that's the best fix we have okay, that's what i assumed i just figured i'd ask right it's the same thing with disorderly and disruptive someone's disruptive we have to remove them from class which is a practice and it happens in face-to-face -face anyhow um going down on, on yes Okay. Would you like me to start over? Just a little bit closer than what there you go. All right. Would it's you want me to? Speak? Okay. So moving on, um, again, we, we remo removed some redundant language from page 12. And then going down a little further, um, we, we again removed redundant language with disorderly and disruptive conduct. On the second page, the top of it says page 13. Um, we had to clarify where it says committing, threatening, or attempting. We had to clarify by adding, by any means. Again, there were some questions about that and ambiguity. So the team felt that was appropriate so that everybody concerned has a better understanding. And in that same section, 
um, in regards to displaying what appears to be a weapon, it's possession of or displaying. Um, we wanted to make sure that everybody understood that just because you don't show what could be a weapon doesn't mean you're within the code of conduct. Um, towards the bottom, same thing with the gambling and gaming. Um, it's not just gambling and gaming, but it's engaging in or other way, wagering activities. Again, these things come from the application of the discipline and the code of conduct throughout the year and the system principles and principles keep track of these things so we can better clarify. Um, on the back of the last page, where it says page 19, um, we had just detention under one of the um, outcomes. We wanted to add in lunch detention, especially because Cuba Heights doesn't have an after school detention program. So we wanted to make sure we, we allowed for that in a range of consequences. So parents and students all understood. Um, the last section again is just adding lunch detention. And finally, the last thing, it's just page 32. Um, we wanted to make sure we added that because people come to the district, we want to make sure everybody understands and follows our safety and security protocols. So we've always had security, but we wanted to make sure safety's in there now with all the changes that have taken place um, in the past six, seven months. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next presentation will be Dr. Ravi concerning the reopening plan form. We're just bringing up the presentation right now so everyone will be able to see it on their screen uh, momentarily. Again, good evening and thank you to all the parents for uh, attending tonight's presentation on the reopening plan. This is the second uh, presentation on the reopening plan um, today and there will be a third and final presentation for uh, parents tomorrow at three o'clock. All of these are being recorded and will be posted on our website. Uh, the one from this morning is already um, posted there. Our agenda for this presentation is to detail the reopening plan for September, review the frequently asked questions, which will be updated and posted on the district website by Friday, August 21st, along with, as I mentioned, the recordings from the three parent forums. Uh, you can submit additional questions via the thought exchange link that I'll share momentarily so that we can, uh, so that those questions can be added to the FAQ document and posted on our website. This is the question that is being asked right now. So based on the information presented in this town hall forum on the reopening plan, what additional questions might you have? You can take your handheld device and hit the uh, QR Q, uh, code and it will take you to the, uh, the website to answer that question, the Thought Exchange website. Or you can go into your browser, type in tjoin.com and enter the nine digit code. You do not need the dashes, just put in those nine digits and you can respond at any time to, to this question throughout the presentation if um, you, you need to ask a clarifying question or if we missed a question um, within the presentation and or the uh, FAQ at the end of this presentation. So the most important thing about presenting this reopening plan is to help parents make an informed decision. And from the very beginning, when this started in March. Our top priority has been and always will be the safety and well-being of our students and the entire DePue family. At the same time, we are focused on fulfilling our core mission and commitment to the students of DePue and their education. When we think about those two things, uh, this graphic helps illustrate uh, those two key points. The first one being health and safety, the second one being student learning. And when we think about those two things, 
and risk and engagement um, in comparison, we know that 100% in-person learning, where we were at back in March, um, has high engagement for student learning. At the same time, during the pandemic, it has a high risk for health and safety. On the other side of the spectrum, with remote learning, we know that students are less engaged during remote learning. We, we discovered that, obviously, in the spring. However, when we talk about health and safety, it obviously has the lowest risk factors because the students are at home and not um, uh, intermingling with other students. Our focus, uh, for the most part, on our reopening plan, based on the guidelines and requirements that we are faced with, uh, is the hybrid plan. That's right pretty much in the middle uh, when we think about student learning and health and safety. And then as of last Friday, August 14th, we did a um, family intent survey, and we had, we were very happy with the outcome. Almost 100% of our students responded, our families responded for their students. We had 1,797 students identified. Of that, 10%, 188 students have chosen uh, to go full remote learning, and 90% in the hybrid model. So how did we get here? How did we get to here tonight with our reopening plan. We really started back in April when we were in the middle of the uh, initial shutdown. And we did a thought exchange survey out to our school community and we asked, as we continue to navigate through the impact of the COVID-19 crisis, what are the most important things that we should be considering in order to keep everyone, students, parents, and teachers, connected and productive as we look at a longer term closure. And the three top uh, thoughts in that survey were the safety and good health of all in our DePew family and community, putting students' needs first, and be reasonable with expectations at all ages. The next survey we did was at the end of April, and this one was for students. As a student, what are your thoughts and questions about the continued school closure due to the COVID-19 crisis, and how can we best support you? And the top three thoughts there were the continued school closure is very difficult. I miss being at school, and this online learning can be difficult at times. The next one was for teachers, and this was in May, this was on May 18th. As you reflect on the past 10 weeks of remote teaching and learning, please share specific thoughts of what areas need attention or further support in order to provide for a smoother transition and or continuance in the event that this is what is expected of schools during the ongoing health crisis. The top three thoughts were more guidance for parents at the beginning of the year should this happen again. If remote learning continues next year, there has to be more student accountability and we need to find ways to get students more engaged in distance learning activities. And at the end of the school year, June 30th, we asked, what are the most important things our district needs to think about as we continue to respond to COVID-19 and a plan for the future? The top three thoughts here were that we need to make sure that students, staff, and parents feel safe regarding our return plan, clear expectations and communication of the parameters, and having a feedback grading system that has more accountability for student engagement and work completed. Then we went into the summertime and the beginning of our conversations in the development of our reopening plan. And that first part of July, the 1st, the 9th, and the 15th, the administrative team came together and had planning meetings focused on these guiding principles for school reopening. Plan for multiple reopening scenarios and contingencies to ensure the health and safety and well being of all students and staff, ensure students and families equitable access to technology required for virtual learning. Provide continued support to students and adults to address their immediate and long-term physical, social, and emotional needs. Offer ongoing personalized and differentiated professional learning. Transform the teaching and learning assessment process to ensure personalization, engagement, and differentiation. Then on July 20th and again on the 21st, the subcommittees met, made up of parents, support staff, teachers, and administrators, and those those subcommittees were uh, centered around health and safety, operations and guidelines, and teaching and learning. And they focused on these assurances, which were provided by uh, 
the, the state education department along with the Department of Health that needed to be included in our reopening plan. And these are the things that we'll be going through for the most part uh, tonight. Then on the 26th, uh, 22nd, uh, the administrative team uh, began to finalize that draft reopening plan, that initial plan, and we sent that out on a thought exchange from uh, July 23rd to July 28th with the question, what thoughts and questions do you have about our draft reopening plan? And we used a number of those responses to um, uh, adjust our plan and, and make it a more solid plan to represent our school community. The top three thoughts here were what is the protocol if a student or staff tests positive for COVID? People are concerned with getting temperatures checked and what will instruction look like? Again, if you go back to that initial graphic, health and safety and student learning. Then on the 30th, the administrative team came together again, utilizing all of the feedback we got from that survey about our draft reopening plan and we um, finalized um, our initial uh, opening, reopening plan to be submitted to uh, the state. So now we're going to go through the reopening plan and, and those key assurances. We're going to start with health and safety. This document, this plan documents efforts to meet two requirements, the monitoring of health conditions and two, uh, containment of potential transmissions of COVID-19 during reopening and operating during the COVID-19 public health emergency. This, this uh, flow chart comes from the Erie County Department of Health and schools are required to follow this flow chart. So if a student or staff is symptomatic, and that is fever, cough, shortness of breath, headache, new loss of taste or smell, sore throat, congestion, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, muscle or body aches, we then need to isolate and send home immediately. Inform student or staff they must seek medical attention and must have provider note or negative COVID-19 test before returning. Student or staff has note from medical provider or that negative COVID-19 test, or it has been 10 days from the onset of symptoms. That, that person can come back uh, to school. Again, if they're symptomatic, they're isolated, sent home immediately. And then if the student or staff tests positive for COVID-19, the school notifies the local county health department of that COVID uh, case, but the health department also is notified from the state of that positive test. We then will complete uh, the form that is found on Erie County's website, notifying them of that positive um, case. Then the health department contacts the student, the parent, or staff to perform case investigation and contact tracing. The, the local health department will notify the school for collaboration, and we have a contact person in each one of our buildings with contact tracing um, and to identify close contacts. Close contact includes persons within six feet or less for more than 10 minutes. Contact tracers may also consider duration and proximity of contact and other criteria in determining close contacts. A close contact will be quarantined for 14 days from the date of last exposure, advised to monitor for symptoms and recommend, recommended to get a diagnostic test five days or more after exposure. Positive student or staff will be isolated for a minimum of 10 days from the start of those symptoms and then the student or staff must be three days without a fever, unmedicated, and have a, pot, a progressive improvement in symptoms before returning. Contacts to positive case can return uh, to school after that 14-day quarantine period. Parents, by sending your children to school each day, you are confirming that you have completed a daily home health screening. However, if you are unable to complete a full screening at home, please contact your school nurse so arrangements can be made at school. In addition, and this is from our initial draft reopening plan thought exchange survey results. In addition, every individual entering a school building will be required to have their temperature checked via a temp guardian auto hand scan thermometer and or a temp or thermometer. Those will be at every entrance to the school building. Approved masks or cloth face coverings must be worn. The district will be supplying every individual a wildcat cloth mask to begin the school year. Anytime individuals are less than six feet apart from one another, upon entry to the building and, upon, and until arriving in the classroom, while in any common spaces, hallways, bathrooms, when in tightly confined spaces, occupy more than one individual at a time, when there is, a, when there is more than one occupant in a district vehicle, 
such as buses. Master cloth face, face coverings do not need to be worn when at least six feet of social distance is able to be maintained. In-person gatherings are held in an open, well-ventilated space with appropriate social distancing among participants. Exceptions to mask face covering requirements must be made for those for whom it is not possible due to medical conditions, disability impact, or other health and safety factors. Mask breaks should occur throughout the day. Breaks should occur when students can be six feet apart and ideally outside or at least with the windows open. The break should occur at a minimum of one time per hour for at least five minutes. Only 50% of the students in a classroom should take a mask break at a time. Teachers may take mask breaks at any time and when they are more than six feet away from their students and or other staff members. Facilities. The district has ensured that appropriate inventory of personal protective equipment and cleaning disinfection have been purchased. The district will post signs on how to stop the spread of COVID-19, properly wash hands, promote everyday protective measures, and properly, properly wear a face covering. The district will conduct regular cleaning and disinfection of the facilities and more frequent cleaning and disinfection of high touch areas. A deep cleaning of all buildings will take place prior to students and staff being reintroduced. The district and in consultation with HVAC experts are evaluating and ensuring that ventilation systems operate properly and increase circulation of outdoor air as much as possible, such as by opening windows and doors, unless they pose a safety or health risk to students using the facility. Occupants of classrooms should not cover unit vents as it will prevent the fresh air from entering the rooms. The district will provide and maintain hand hygiene stations, including hand washing with soap, water, and paper towels, or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing 60% or more alcohol for areas where hand washing is not feasible. Child nutrition. The district will be offering lunch and breakfast to all enrolled students during the school year, whether students are at school or learning remotely. Meals will be served within the cafeterias. All students must social distance, six feet of separation, while consuming meals. Hand washing in our hand sanitizer locations will be provided and maintained in the school cafeteria. There will be one way in and one way out procedures. There will be no self-service on serving lines. Surfaces, surfaces will be cleaned after each lunch period. Transportation. The district will perform regular school bus disinfection measures, train students and school bus staff regarding social distancing on the bus, at stops and at unloading times, and train students and staff regarding the wearing of masks. In order to reduce the density of students on buses, the district has encouraged parents to transport their children to and from school. The district will seat students from the rear of the bus forward to limit students from walking past each other. To reduce the density of students on buses, no more than one student will be assigned to each seat. Students in the same household may sit together two to three to a seat. Social and emotional well-being. The district has provided professional development to support educators' integration of social and emotional learning in their teaching, including the skills to foster positive learning environments and techniques for embedding SEL into instruction, both in person and remote. The district has established systems that promote supportive staff student relationships to ensure that all students have at least one caring staff member who checks in regularly with them and who their family is able to connect with for any needed supports. The district will be proactive in preparing access to mental health and trauma supports for adults and students, which may include establishing partnerships with outside entities and agencies. School schedules. To begin the 2021 academic year, the district will facilitate a soft reopening for all students beginning on Wednesday, September 9th through Friday, September 18th. The emphasis will be on health and safety protocols, social and emotional learning, and technology training. All students will learn the key aspects of using Zoom and Schoology. Parent training and resources will be posted on our district website. Just, just that group. Hybrid model. Beginning on Monday, September 21st, students will be in school with an altered schedule. Monday, through Monday and Thursday and Tuesday and Friday to reduce student population within the buildings. Students will attend 
in person for a portion of a week, and the rest of the time they would engage in remote instruction. Wednesdays will be remote learning days and also reserved for diverse learners, office hours, academic intervention services, related services, professional development, and other activities as needed. Diverse learners may be assigned to attend school on all days, depending on their individual needs. This will result in a possible 71 face-to-face -face instructional days for students with the last names beginning with an A through L and 110 remote learning days, and a possible 73 face-to-face -face instructional days for students with last names beginning with an M through Z and 108 remote learning days. Teachers will report to school on each day. This is a typical week uh, view of a schedule, a learning plan schedule. It's uh, for the students' last names A through L on a Monday. They would have that in-person learning at school with social distancing requirements. And then the M through Z group will be virtually learning from home. And then identify diverse learners uh, will be coming uh, uh, will be coming into school face to face. Those identified ones, and then that will repeat on an alternating schedule: Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Wednesday, virtual learning from home for all students. Social and emotional check in with all students and classes through Schoology. All teachers available for live virtual student Q and A at designated times throughout every Wednesday. Teachers will be available for parents to contact them about questions and concerns they might have with learning. Please note that Wednesdays will have a modified remote schedule as follows. The middle school and high school virtual schedule will end at 11.18 a.m. It's basically a half day. The Cuga Heights uh, virtual schedule will end at 12.05. Some specials will be taught, however, remotely in the afternoon due to scheduling needs. The afternoon will be reserved for, but not limited to, any of the following student conferences, parent conferences, multi-tier systems, uh, uh, system of supports, individualized education programming, um, English language learners opportunities, and 504 meetings, professional learning for leaders and teachers, and instructional and collaborative planning. Important points of clarification for the hybrid and remote instructional model. Attendance will be taken every day for all students, regardless of the setting, and recorded in PowerSchool. Instruction will be for the entire class each day. Those at home will use video conferencing, Zoom, and Schoology, the learning management system, to be a part of the class and at times work on their own and post their work on Schoology. Instruction from staff, whether remote or in person, will be conducted from 7.38 a.m. to 2.20 p.m. during regular school hours for middle school and high school and 9.05 a.m. to 3.05 p.m. for Cuga Heights. Students will receive numerical grades in all courses for various formative and summative assessments, not simply a pass or fail. The expectations for hybrid and remote learning platforms for the fall of 2020 are greater than they were in the spring of 2020. And again, I go back to those um, thoughts that were shared in the thought exchange and the need for those higher expectations. Yeah. Just to clarify, make sure it's clear. Period one for A to L on Monday, the 21st. We're going to have that class, whatever, let's say it's English, right? Probably. That teacher will be teaching them as well as the kids at home at the same time. That's correct. The, the, yes, the high so the kids, correct. Different lessons so the, 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 M through, the A through L group will be face to face, the M through C will be at home remote. There'll be a, and I'm going to go through that in a second. Okay, they're going to, they're going to uh, do a, uh, a check in, and then the M through Z students will be dismissed, and they'll start working on their activities in school. Okay. okay. This is a, um, a graphic of a model weekly, uh, uh, hybrid and remote model weekly schedule. So you can see um, the period by period, both in middle school and high school, and uh, Cuyahoga Heights Elementary. And it calls out that Wednesday day, and on Wednesdays, all UPK and 12th grade students will be in remote instruction, and identify diverse learners will attend school for face-to-face -face instruction. Those Cuga Heights Elementary students in remote instruction will follow their designated grade level and classroom schedule, 8.45 a.m. to 3.05 p.m., because remember, we have to pick up those afternoon um, special classes because of those scheduling uh, requirements. 
This is a uh, sample daily schedule for Cuba Heights Elementary. So the Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday in-person schedule will look something like this. There'll be a, a morning work after breakfast. Attendance will be taken both in school and the virtual students at home. Announcements will be made. There'll be a morning meeting and outline for the day. 90 minutes of ELA, 60 minutes of math. There'll be a lunch break worked in there. 40 minutes of special. One day per week, there is a double special. Um, 40 minutes for uh, academic intervention. 40 minutes for social studies and science. And then 30 minutes for social emotional learning, activity-based learning and or mass breaks. On a Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday virtual time, again, that lines up with that breakfast, morning work attendance, in school and virtual announcements, the morning meeting, and then there's 90 minutes of ELA, synchronous and or asynchronous lessons followed with independent and or paired work time, 60 minutes of math instruction, synchronous or asynchronous, very much just like ELA. There'll be a lunch break worked in, um, the special will be synchronous um, and or asynchronous. And again, there's a double one uh, once a week. Academic intervention will, will be worked in, uh, small group instruction as needed, social studies and science. And again, um, synchronous or asynchronous activities to, to de uh, designed to promote uh, wellness. The Wednesday virtual day, again, morning work, attendance and announcements, 120 minutes of synchronized instruction centered around ELA, math, science, or social studies. There'll be a 30 minute break, 40 minute special, and then 170 minutes in the balance of that day will be individual small group work and support and our office hours as needed um, and or professional development for our staff. Attendance and chronic absenteeism. Attendance during face-to-face -face remote instruction. When students are receiving face-to-face -face instruction, Teachers will use our student management system to record class attendance according to the schedule. When students are present in remote learning, teachers will take attendance using a variety of digital platforms to record interactions. Methods of outreach. School staff will reach out to families to continue to work collaboratively to support all learners. Methods of outreach may include telephone calls, emails, learning platforms and apps like Remind, others as established by the parent and the school team. Technology and connectivity for our computing devices. As part of our One to World initiative, all students are assigned personal computing devices as follows. The high school and middle school are assigned Chromebooks. Yuga Heights, all kindergarten through grade two students are assigned an iPad, and all grades through three, grades three through five are assigned a Chromebook. With tech support, the district provides support on using technology for students, families, and teachers provides professional development for teachers and leaders on designing effective online remote learning experiences. Members of the technology department are available for phone support and their contact information can be found within the full reopening plan on our website. Teaching and learning. The district, uh, the district hybrid remote learning plan has three key tenets. Number one, social emotional support, expectations and supports that the district will provide for staff and students to support social emotional well-being during this time. Instructional support will be geared toward supporting the content delivery of the virtual learning experience and content delivery, resources that will be used by students, staff, and parents in the online environment. So uh, definitions about asynchronous learning and synchronous learning. Asynchronous Virtual learning occurs when student work, students work independently on learning activities and assignments. Teachers provide lesson content through written materials and video presentations. Students show what they know by completing interactive learning activities, self-grading and teacher-graded assessments, and teacher-graded written work and projects. Synchronized learning is the virtual learning occurs when students join an audio, video, enabled meeting space at the same time as the teacher. This space is greatly enhanced when the meeting space includes an interactive whiteboard, a chat, and breakout rooms. This synchronous session may include whole group instruction led by the instructor and small group work amongst the learners. The structure of this session is much like an in-person, face-to-face learning experience. Expectations for remote learning. Synchronous learning classes. Students attend class on time. Per their class schedule, students will follow the district code of conduct. Students are ready to learn. Workspace is designed for the student. 
Students will show their face on the screen to engage with a teacher virtually, and students will participate in the class. Asynchronous learning. Complete asynchronous activities assigned each day. Students show proof of participation in daily e-learning by satisfactorily completing uh, assigned, assigned assignments to demonstrate evidence of student learning, such as video, picture, or activities submitted as lessons and are completing assignments. Students and parents will communicate with the teacher when needing additional assistance, tutoring, etc. District-wide virtual learning requirements for Schoology. The Zoom link is displayed at all times. Topics will be labeled as weeks, such as uh, Social Studies Week 1, 921 through 925. Zoom is to be used for teacher communication to students only, not student to student, unless placed in a breakout room by the teacher. Assignments, posts, and requirements will be posted daily by first period. Building procedures. All building access, any student, parent, caregiver, visitor, or staff showing symptoms of COVID-19 will be excluded. And please follow the district daily home health screening procedures that are found in the full reopening plan and in Appendix F. Building traffic patterns. The district has designed measures to reduce bi-directional foot traffic using tape or signs with arrows and hallways or spaces throughout the school and posted signage and distance markers detonating, uh, denoting spaces of six feet in all commonly used areas and in the areas in which lines are commonly formed or people may congregate, such as outdoor spaces, libraries, classrooms, cafeterias, and uh, importantly, health screening stations. Hugo Heights Elementary arrival and dismissal. We will no longer host an early morning drop off due to the number of students in a shared space. The building will not open until 8.45 a.m. Parents are not to drop their students off prior to 8.45 a.m. Parent drop-off in the morning will now be at the front entrance of the building as there will be an increase in the volume of parents dropping off their children in the morning. Parent pickup in the afternoon will begin prior to 3.05 p.m. in the front of the building and in accordance with traffic safety and at staggered times based on last names. That letter uh, about the staggered times is being sent out uh, today and tomorrow and is also posted on our website. The YMCA Universal Pre-Kindergarten uh, Program will have designated pickup points in the front of the school building. Vehicle flow and logistics were considered to accommodate anticipated increase in parent transports. Due to traffic and safety hazards, all tra Traffic will be limited to buses, deliveries, and designated staff on the service road. All other traffic will be directed to utilize Como Park Boulevard to enter and exit the campus. School buses will unload and load one bus at a time in the back of the school building. Before and after school activities will be limited in order to ensure time for daily sanitizing. Students must report directly to their classroom upon arrival. Teachers will direct and monitor, monitor the student's use of lockers at both arrival and dismissal. If parents are signing out at a time other than arrival or dismissal, the procedure will take place in the health office or the main office based on purpose and in most events prior to 2.30 p.m. to avoid traffic congestion. Drop off of items to students will be limited to emergency reasons. Visitors will only be permitted in the building for essential business, CSE meetings, meetings with staff, etc. Middle school and high school arrival and dismissal. Parents are not to drop their students off and student drivers are not to exit their vehicles prior to 7.25 a.m. and must be in the front of the building. One bus will unload at a time in the designated area behind the building and at the breezeway door. Before and after school activities will be limited to ensure time for daily sanitizing. Students must report directly to their first period class upon arrival. Students who need breakfast can get their food and go directly to first period. In order to promote social distancing and health and safety practices, students will not have access to their lockers at this time. That we, we may get some flexibility as we move through the beginning of the school year, but at this point, we want to ensure um, that we uh, diminish the amount of, of congregating students. Students uh, should carry a minimum amount of materials for the day, but will be allowed to carry a backpack. Students are always required to wear masks while in the building. Students will be dismissed at 2.20 p.m. Parent pickup will be in the front of the building and buses will be loaded in the back of the building at the breezeway. All students 
using to practice social distancing as they are entering their buses and cars. Visitors will only be permitted in the building for essential business. Again, CSE meetings, meetings with staff, et cetera. Due to traffic and safety hazards, all traffic will be limited to buses, deliveries of designated staff on the service road, as I mentioned before. All traffic for middle school and high school will be directed to utilize transit road to enter and exit the campus. This is a uh, map of the full campus. The bus routes are designated with the yellow arrows. These are bus routes only and uh, uh, deliveries and designated staff. There will not be any through traffic, as I mentioned. The blue arrows designate the middle school student drop off and pick up only at the middle, middle high school main driveway off Transit Road, drop off and pick up in the middle school designated loop, and exit the middle high school main driveway onto Transit Road. The green arrow designates the high school uh, student drop off and pick up only. You enter the middle school, high school main driveway off Transit Road, drop off and pick up in the high school designated loop, and exit either the north exit, that's a right turn only onto Transit Road, or via the middle high school main driveway onto Transit Road. And this is a zoomed in focus of that area. And you can see the blue, aerial, or blue arrows in front of the middle school, green in front of the high school, the yellow in the back by the breezeway, and the three red arrows designate where the drop-offs will take place. On to uh, Cuga. Again, yellow designates the uh, buses. The purple designates Cuga Heights Elementary student drop-off and pick-up only. Enter the Cuga Heights Elementary parking lot at the east driveway entrance off Como Park Boulevard. Drop-off and pick-up in the designated loop and exit the west driveway exit onto Como Park Boulevard. The red designates the points that students will be dropped off and picked up by either the school bus or parent guard or guardian. You can see um, in the zoomed in uh, view here, the two big red arrows in the front that's in the loop, and the shorter red arrow is in the back behind the cafeteria at the um, original parent drop off loop. Special education. Special education, um, a frequently asked question document can be found at the end of the plan in Appendix H. And I'll go through a number of these questions here. What students are included in the diverse learner schedule? Diverse learners pertain to our students in the 811, 1211, and possibly some of the 151 programs, depending on the individual student grades K through 12. What schedule, schedule will my child follow if they are receiving face to face instruction five days a week? Students in the 811, 1211, and 51 programs will start with the district soft opening schedule. So those are for A through L students on 99, 911, 915, and 917. And then students with M through Z will come 910, 914, 916, and 918. And then starting at 921, all 811, 1211, and some of those 151 students will attend five days a week for face-to-face -face instruction. What support will be in place for students enrolled in the integrated co-teaching classes? We have IEPs, but will only be in school two days a week. Students will still have a special education teacher assigned as their base teacher. They will receive class instruction from the general education teacher and special education teacher. The hybrid model allows for smaller class size and more individualized instruction to take place. How will related services be provided? That's speech, OTPT, and vision. Related services will be provided in school, remotely, or a combination of both, as schedules allow. Students will still have a special education teacher assigned as their base teacher. IEPs will be implemented to the greatest extent possible as per SED reopening guidance. Will the hybrid plan Wednesday, with the hybrid plan Wednesday, is remote learning district wide? What will Wednesday remote learning look like for special education students? Wednesday, Wednesdays will still be a face-to-face -face instruction day for our students in the 811, 1211, and some 51 programs. However, it will be a condensed schedule with middle school and high school st students following a half-day schedule, and Cuba Heights uh, students also following a half-day schedule and being dismissed at 12.05 p.m. and continuing with a special, uh, a scheduled special um, art, music, PE, or tech virtually in the afternoon. If I choose 100% virtual learning for my child, will they still be able to receive the related services? Yes. 
Related services will be provided to the greatest extent possible per SCT guidance. Services would be dependent upon the therapist schedule and would need to be delivered, obviously, remotely. So some other frequently asked questions. And again, these questions came from our thought exchanges since April. And I would like for you, if you still have questions or need any questions or answers clarified, please join this current thought exchange and enter those questions in. We've already had about uh, 40 from this morning's um, presentation that this FAQ has been updated uh, with. So you can use your device to use the QR code or go into a browser, type in tejoin.com uh, and enter those nine digits. Again, you don't need the dashes. Will opening fully be revisited during the school year if guidelines allow? And would it be quarterly or half year or at any given time? Yes, the district will make adjustments as new guidance uh, becomes available and we're allowed to do that. If families decide to send their children to school and then change their minds, can they easily switch to remote learning, vice versa, if families decide uh, to remote learn, can they easily switch to in-person hybrid instruction? Parents may switch between the option of hybrid instruction to remote learning, but not from remote learning back to hybrid, at least for that first 20 weeks. The commitment, um, the commitment for remote learning, uh, as I mentioned, is for that first 20 weeks. This is due to staffing and planning needs. One to two teachers, K through five, will need to be assigned to remote learning classes only, and teachers six through 12 will need to be assigned remote learning course sections only. If parents haven't already confirmed the remote learning option, they will need to directly contact the building principals if they want to switch from hybrid learning to remote learning. And again, that can happen at any time. If school is forced to close and resumes in full remote learning, will teachers be expected to provide consistent instruction just like in hybrid learning? Yes, learning course content will continue at home following a similar sequence and timeline as in school for most courses. At the elementary level, some instruction may be broken into small group work given the development of the developmental level of students. Instruction will be monitored. Will teachers be taking attendance when students are remote learning? Yes, the SED guidance requires that attendance be taken daily. Why are students not attending two consecutive days in a row? If we were to have students attend two consecutive days, they would be away from face-to-face -face instruction for five full days. We will be deep cleaning the facilities each night, not just on Wednesdays. As an elementary parent, I'm curious about outdoor activities. Will the children have an opportunity to have the break, that break and get those wiggles out? Yes, when feasible, Teachers are encouraged to take the students outside as much as possible. When will fall sports, sports tryouts be held if New York State, State allows fall sports? NISPA, the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, has announced that the start date for fall sports has been pushed back to September 21st. The fall regional and state championships have been canceled due to COVID-19 pandemic. The termination for sports will be made by NISPA, and we will uh, notify students as soon as we know. If students play a sport, will they be able to participate if they choose to do the remote learning option? Yes, students who opt for remote learning would be eligible for athletics if they are permitted. In other words, if they're academically eligible. If they meet the bona fide student regulation, which is credit for three courses and physical education. Will high school seniors still be allowed to drive to school? Yes, parking passes will be provided to all seniors who want one and with 50% of the class attending each day, we will also accommodate any juniors. Will cleaning supplies be available in classrooms? Yes, classrooms will be stocked with paper towels and disinfectants. Will there still be Harkness, a Harkness program? Yes, and they will follow the student's schedule, whether it is remote or hybrid. Any day a student is in person at school, they will be in person at Harkness. If we commit to 20 weeks of remote instruction after 20 weeks, can we choose another option if need be? Yes, we will do another family intent survey during the month of December to uh, allow families to make that choice. If someone at school tests positive for the virus, will all parents be notified or just parents of the kids who came in contact with the infected person? And how soon will we be notified? The district has a point of contact and communicates directly with the Erie County Department of Health to engage contact tracing protocols. 
which includes directly contacting potentially exposed parties. As far as district-wide communications, per the Erie County Department of Health, the district will follow the same process that it uses for all communicable diseases, MRSA, meningitis, and pertussis. When a confirmed case is reported in a building, we send notification to the entire district, all parents and staff, to make everyone aware that the infection is present in a building so that they can take necessary precautions. Due to privacy laws, we will not disclose details about individuals who test positive for COVID-19. Any follow-up communication will be done if the situation warrants it and in consultation with the Erie County Department of Health. What if students refuse to wear masks for social distance? If the student does not have a verified medical reason for not wearing a mask, they will be sent home. The district will be vigilant about students wearing masks and maintaining social distance. If needed, the code of conduct will be employed. Will you be working with local daycare programs, daycares and programs to create a list of childcare options for working parents who cannot work from home? Yes, the district is working with the YMCA as well as the Erie County Department of Children and Family Services to identify all of the available childcare facilities in the area. Where does UPK fit in with any of the plans? UPK is an integral part of the reopening plan. We just found out yesterday that it has been uh, funded for the year. And, we'll, uh, and we uh, will follow the same hybrid plan as the rest of the district. Due to a limited amount of funding for UPK, a remote learning option is not available. The YMCA is the primary agency administering the UPK program within the Cuba Heights Elementary building. When will kindergarten screening take place? Kindergarten screening will take place when students return to school. If they are present in class, it will be done in person. If not, it will be done remotely. When will kindergarten orientation take place? Unfortunately, we are unable to do an orientation for students at this time, but we'll be posting an informative video to the district website for all of our incoming kindergartners and their parents. A Blackboard Connect phone call will be made once the video is posted. Also, tours will be offered in the coming days, not weeks, for interested parents. Will all the events posted within the district calendar still take place? The district calendar events, uh, supply drop-off, open houses, concerts, etc., may be postponed, canceled, or modified, and notifications will be made. Is the entire school going to be deep cleaned each night? Yes. The school buildings will be deep cleaned each night, as well as cleaning the high-touch areas throughout the school day. Cleaning staff have been redeployed to our high need times, and the second shift staff have been modified to begin earlier. Furthermore, additional staff have been employed. If my child has symptoms and cannot return to school, will he be able to learn remotely on those two days that he will not be in the classroom? Yes, students that are ill will still be able to participate remotely, even though they are in the hybrid learning option. When the students are on a remote class day, what does that look like? Are the students viewing the classroom live during the day or are they being sent instructional videos? Remote learning days will vary depending on the age level, the course content and individual teacher and instructional delivery. The expectation, however, is that there will be a daily engagement with each student and their teacher and attendance will be taken. Why are the first two weeks of school different than the other days that the kids will go to school? These first two weeks are critical to acclimate our students back to school and to reconnect with their teachers. This time will be spent on social emotional learning, health and safety protocols, and technology training. Remote learning will not begin until September 21st. For children starting kindergarten this fall, will they be receiving a computer or tablet for their at-home distance learning? Any student will be in full remote learning in in need of a device, will receive a device between September 9th and September 18th. Parents will be notified of those pickup dates. Will there be a separate location in the nurse's office, separate from the sick bay for children to receive daily medication? Yes, sick children will be separated from well children who just need medication and or a treatment. What has been added to each building for health and safety? Each building has, had, has hand sanitizers mounted outside each bathroom, cafeteria, offices, security check-ins and other various common areas. Each building will have at least four portable hand sanitizer dispensers to deploy as needed. Every classroom will have a wall-mounted hand sanitizer dispenser as well. Drinking fountains will be disabled and additional bottle fillers have been ordered and are being installed. 
Will dividers be in classrooms to encourage social distancing? Yes, in our classrooms that, are tip, that typically have tables, UPK, kindergarten, and first grade learning centers, and where there is a need for teachers to closely interact with students. In addition, we have four to five barriers available for all other classrooms. If more barriers are needed as we begin the school year, the district will purchase them. Furthermore, students will be seated in, every, in an every other row format where desks are in classrooms. Remember, we will have less than 50% of our students in attendance each day. What about internet connectivity? If a family is having connectivity issues, they need to contact our technology department and we will work with you to mitigate any issues. What is the plan for school supplies? If my child is not in school 100%, why would I get all of the requested supplies? At this point, parents should just purchase the basics and wait for further direction from the remote classroom teacher once the school year begins. I see times are staggered for pickup at Cuga Heights. When will we get information? As I mentioned, the letter is being sent out today and tomorrow and is also posted on our website. Students with the last name of A through D and M through P will pick up at 3.05 p.m. E through H and Q through T will pick up at 3.12 p.m. And I through L and U through Z will pick up at 3.20 p.m. And again, this is trying to balance out the numbers that we have picking up. I have two students attending Cuba Heights for hybrid. Will each child receive a Chromebook, iPad, or only those that receive 100% remote instruction? Yes, all students will have a device. Kindergarten through grade two will have an iPad, and students in grades three through 12 will have Chromebooks. How will schools be sanitized between groups? Each night, each classroom and other areas will be cleaned with Oxivar spray, disinfectant, and air X spray and go. Will we get to see what our child's classroom will look like before school begins? We will be producing a video with a classroom tour and short interviews before the start of the start of start school and posting it to our website. Will parent-teacher conferences be face-to-face -face or virtual on the scheduled conference days in November? We will have the option of both modes of conferencing and will schedule via the individual classroom teachers once the school year begins. If, if uh, a child has known allergies, stuffy, uh, runny nose, continuously sneezing, but has no temperature. Should the child stay home or could they attend school? The child will be able to attend school. The parent will need to communicate to the school nurse and let them know of the chronic issue that produces these symptoms and that they are not COVID related. A doctor's note may be requested from the nurse. When will we find out who our child's teacher will be? Due to the process of assigning students to hybrid and remote learning, Teacher assignments will be sent out during the week of August 31st. What type of masks are acceptable per the CDC? Cloth face coverings, two-ply or three-ply, that covers the nose and mouth. Surgical paper mask, face shields are allowed, but with the, still the use of the mask. Per the CDC, N95 and KN95 masks are considered critical supplies and should be reserved for healthcare workers and other first responders. Please note that the use of a neck gaiter or a bandana is no longer acceptable as they have proven to be ineffective. Back to making an informed decision. So hopefully with all of this information that was just presented to you uh, within the reopening plan, the feedback from the thought exchanges early on during the pandemic, and then the uh, updated frequently asked questions, you can make an informed decision as a parent for your uh, son or daughter. Our top priority has been and always will be the safety and well-being of our students in the entire Depew family. At the same time, we are focused on fulfilling our core mission and commitment to the students of Depew and their education. And as this graphic showed in the very beginning, we're focused on that health and safety and student learning. Uh, we know that 100% uh, in-person learning cannot happen right now as it is a high risk for health and safety. And we recognize that it is the best for high engagement. Uh, and we know that remote learning has the lowest risk with health and safety, um, but it does have less engagement for our student learning. So we are really focused on making sure that hybrid model uh, will work for as many students as uh, it possibly can. Again, if you have any additional questions or need any clarifying information, please submit those thoughts to this thought exchange um, I will be reviewing that again tomorrow morning, uh, the responses and updating this presentation with uh, additional frequently asked questions. 
Thank you for your attendance, and please look for that updated FAQ on our website by Friday, this Friday, on our website at debutschools.org. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ravy. Appreciate your work and your entire staff has been together. That's, that's uh, like the many of our district residents, parents, teachers, students. Um, at this time, uh, the agenda is a public poll. This is the time in the board meeting agenda when district residents may address the board for education with their concerns. Each resident is up to three minutes to address the board. So it's 50 minutes to allow each public forum. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, there's a question. Okay, what do you want to do with me at this time? We're going to address the board of education through the chat feature. So I do put some questions in the chat. Is this schedule on the website? She was referring to the uh, schedule for when students will be attending. Yes, it's in the plan. Yes, it is in the plan. Second question is, so buses will have maximum of 22 students? Yes, as long as they can socially distance. What are the hours for pre-K? It should be on our website. But Dr. Ramey does not have that in front of him. So students do not need to be logged in for the entire day while remote learning? That is correct. That is correct. How will the online students receive the same one on as the children on ground? <laughs> They won't, and it will be different. Uh, so the next question is, Dr. Reed is asked to be elaborate on that. Right. I assume we're going to get asked. Yes. Um, because we did say in the product the, they'll be served practice and lunch every single day. That's what it looks like. Right, so, so just like we did when we were closed, mm -hmm. breakfast and lunches will be available for pickup here. And the next school will be the same. Yep, same way. Yep. Thank you. The next question was, so again, uh, kids have to be logged on all day. No, they do not have, if they're remote learning, they will not have to be logged on all day. If they are remote learning, they will not have to be logged on all day. And that will be determined by the classroom teacher. That will be determined by the classroom teacher. They can't hear me through my mic. How are daycares going to be able to help kids complete and submit work online? Are you working with daycare providers and how to help kids? So we are, we are working with daycare providers. We recognize the fact that they will not be able to be logged on continuously or maybe at all at the daycare. So those teachers will be communicated with that those students that are in daycare facilities may have to wait until they get home to complete their assignments. Okay. Are we going to reassess the plan and look at going 100% at some point during the school year? The determination for going back to 100%? The determination for going back to 100%? Lies with the State of New York. Lies with the state of New York. Who can we contact for personal questions on homeschooling options? You can contact uh, my office. You may contact Dr. Rady's office at 716 686 
5104. What about the Y program? I do believe you answered that in your yes. presentation. Can you please clarify the soft opening for the first two weeks on September 9th to the 18th? Does my son, last name starting with a C, go to school on Wednesday 9-9? Yes, that's the first day. Yes, that is the first day. Uh, question about what about school supplies? I believe you did answer that in your presentation. If your child is doing 100% remote learning, are they required to attend the in-person hybrid classes the first two weeks of school? No. No. They will start on September 21st. They will start on September 21st. After January 29th, do we have the ability to go from remote to hybrid, assuming we're not back 100%? Yes, I did answer that. Yes. We're going to send out another survey in December. Another survey will be sent out in December. And you, will make it, you can make that determination at that time. And you can make that determination at that time. When will students who are 100% remote learning start? September 21st. September 21st. Where will our remote children be placed in January if we send them back with non-remote teachers or new teachers, question mark? They may be new teachers. They may be new teachers. That would depend on the number of students that are still in remote. That would depend on the number of students that are still in remote. When will the students receive a letter on who their teacher will be for the year? Again, I mentioned that in the presentation, the week of August 31st. The week of August 31st, that was in the presentation. What is the maximum number of students that can fit six feet apart in a classroom? Depending on the classroom. Depending on the classroom. Up to 14. Up to 14. Will students who decide to homeschool have access to the applications? No. No. If they are not logged on all day at homeschooling, then how will they be on Zoom with each class learning? Students that are remote learning. Students that are remote learning will be assigned a schedule. Will be assigned a schedule by the teacher. So they may they may need to log in. So they may need to log in, in the class momentarily with a class. But then they will work individually by themselves at home. But then they will work individually at home by themselves. Is there a county-based infection threshold that could potentially shut schools down again? I believe it is 5%. I believe it is 5%. What do you consider the basics in terms of school supplies? I think it will be important for students to uh, begin the school year with... I think it will be important for the students time. to start the school year with notebooks and pencils and pens and basic supplies. I'm looking at my colleagues that are teachers at the table. That's looking at colleagues at the teachers at the tables, yeah. calculator. Will the district be mailing out color-coded schedules, drop-off info, etc.? No, no we, we do not plan on mailing out color-coded schedules. No, we, we do not plan on mailing out color-coded schedules. Student schedules for middle school and high school are schedules uh, for middle school and high school are electronic. Are electronic. Won't remote learning students be missing content if they're starting September twenty first? There is no content being uh, delivered. There is no the content being opening. delivered in the soft opening. You recall, soft opening is for, for social emotional learning. Soft opening is for social and emotional learning. And getting students reacclimated. And getting students reacclimated with school. Around the 
health and safety around the health and safety requirements. Are all teachers on board with this plan? I can't answer that question. I can't answer that question. How are students supposed to carry everything they need in our backpacks? They will have to limit the amount of materials that they bring to school each day. They will day. need to limit the amount of materials that they bring to school each day. Teachers are aware. Teachers are aware. That they cannot use their lockers. They cannot use their lockers. And they will plan accordingly as well. And they will plan accordingly as well. Will there be air purification systems put in place inside schools? As I mentioned, our HVAC systems. As I are mentioned, our HVAC systems are being evaluated to ensure their optimal operation. To assure that they are, I'm sorry, optimal operation. What punishment will be given to students who intentionally cough or sneeze on another student? We will follow our code of conduct. We will follow our code of conduct. And discipline will be handled accordingly. And discipline will be handled handled accordingly. Do children with an IEP go five days a week? Some will be going five days a week. Some will be going five days a week. Are middle students still going to have to walk to classrooms all the way on the other side of high school? Or are those high school teachers walking to the middle school to teach? I can't answer that question, but I will get the answer. We cannot answer that question at this time, but Dr. Raby will look at the answer to that. That is the last question. Are you upgrading filters for the MERV filters? I'm sorry. We are not because our, our HVAC units. We are not because our HVAC filters. units cannot handle those filters. And then we have a comment. Just a uh, great job. Thank you. Again, if you have any other questions, you're welcome to put them into TE join along with uh, the code. There will be another public forum. There will be another public forum at the end of the meeting. Thank you. 